Well, hello, my friend. Welcome to day 247 of our Bible reading plan. We are reading through the Bible in one year together, and I'm so glad that you've joined us on the journey for today. Can't wait to share some of my thoughts and reflections on the passages of scripture that we've been reading today with you. So the first thought I had came out of 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 9 to 10. It says this, as it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting. For you felt a godly grief so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret. Whereas worldly grief produces death. I love how in this passage of scripture, Paul so perfectly and succinctly and simply um, just acknowledges the difference and makes us aware of the difference between worldly grief and godly grief. And he shows how godly grief is actually good. It actually is an awareness of our sin, an awareness of our state before God, an awareness that we need to repent and it leads us to repentance. And as we repent before God, we receive forgiveness. We receive freedom that comes with repentance. Worldly grief only leads us to more sh more shame. I was trying to say shame and sin. More sin and more more shame at the same time, just this cycle of shame and sin and shame and sin and shame and sin because we can't break out of it as we have worldly grief. But as we have godly grief, as we have godly sorrow over our sinful state and over the things that we have done and the places we have been, as we have godly grief, that actually leads us to repentance, which leads us to freedom. So don't be afraid of godly grief in your life where there's an unrest in your soul that is something is just not right and you're saying I don't know what to do about this I don't know what what to say I don't know what to do here you've just got this unrest you've got this wrestle going on this godly grief that is leading you to repent before God to say sorry to God to uh, step into the freedom that he has for you because you've been living um, on the edge of his will or outside of his will just doing something that is going against what he wants you to do so don't be afraid of godly grief today it leads us to to repentance that leads us to freedom. I also loved um, this passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1, where it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. I love this passage of scripture in Isaiah. It's the encounter that Isaiah has with God. It's this this incredible throne room encounter that he has where he sees God high and exalted on the throne. And he and the Bible starts in, in this passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter six, within the year that King Uzziah died. And King Uzziah represents pride. And so metaphorically, it's sort of saying in the year that pride died, I saw the Lord. I had this encounter with God that changed my life. We see in this encounter, in the year that pride died, Isaiah has this encounter with God that leads him to uh, intense holiness, a depth of restoring that that purity before God and sending him out, this, this catalyst, this catapult into his calling and clarity of his calling to be a voice to the people of God and to be a prophet to the nations. And so what I love about this passage of scripture, if we look at King Uzziah being sort of that metaphor for pride in the year that pride died, shows us then that when we humble ourselves before God, when we let pride die in our lives, we can have encounters with God that lead us into a deeper place of holiness, into a deeper place of seeing God and knowing God in a deeper way, and also into a place where it's going to clarify and catapult us into our calling. So I'd love to pray for us today, my friend. I'd love to pray that pride would die in our lives, that we would go deeper with him, we would be catapulted into our calling today. And I would love to pray as well that we would not be afraid of godly grief in our lives, that we would welcome godly grief. We would welcome the discipline of God to lead us to repentance and lead, lead us into a place of freedom with him. So God, I just thank you for my friend today. I thank you for uh, speaking to us through your word today. I thank you that you're here and that you're ministering to us in your secret place, Lord God. I pray, Holy Spirit, right now that you would just come and remind us 
us that godly grief leads us to repentance and leads us to freedom. And so if there is anything that should be grieving us right now, if there's anything in our lives that is grieving the Holy Spirit, if we're walking out of step with you, out of sync with you in any area of our lives, God, highlight that. Give us a godly grief over that thing. And God, I pray that it would lead us to repentance and it would lead us to freedom in you. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that pride would die in our lives, Lord God, that we would um, humble ourselves before you once again today, Lord. As we humble ourselves before you, God, I thank you that you would lead us to a deeper place of holiness, a deeper place of your presence, of seeing you high and exalted. Lord God, let us see you more clearly. And God, I thank you that you would clarify our calling and you would catapult us into your calling for our lives, Lord God. We just give you all the praise and we give you all the glory for everything that you're doing in our hearts and in our lives today. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, my friend, for day 247 of our Bible reading plan. Can't wait to see you tomorrow for day 248. I'll see you then. Bye.